Hey everyone, um, I'm just sitting here cleaning my vanity, but it's a mess because we're getting ready to move and stuff, but um, I listened to the clips about Michelle going back to ski, so on and so forth, um, but then I was listening to more about gangrene, and um, I thought my drapes were closed, but we're open, um, and I think she could lose her toe, if not her leg, from what I watched, and um, I don't know if a lot of people know about gangrene, so I figured I would include a little informational video, um, it's interesting to me, it might not be interesting to everybody, because I think this is going to be like... She said, we're going to start a toe down series, which I think it's going to be going on long enough that that's probably going to happen because I think it's going to be maintaining her toe and fighting off, which would be the inevitable of having to have it amputated um, unless she gets whatever unlining, underlying condition is causing this. So let's take a look. Yeah. We're going to start doing a tailgate kind of now, really. No, we're not doing it. No, nobody, hold on. Hold on me. There we go. Well, there you go. You're audio only right now, Michelle. What do you have to say? Okay, well, I may have to have it amputated in a week. Um, my, my, I may have to have my neck sliced open tomorrow. It's not funny. I was going to get a dead foot. serious issue, I agree. Let me put it back on. Do you understand my foot? Do you understand that my... Can you see my neck? A few moments later. No, it's not skiing. Yeah, come on. Right, so look, here's, I got to talk turkey with you for a second. Let's, let's start a show. Hold on. It's, it's called the ear and toe. It's called the ear and toe. <laughs> it's, let's start the ear and toe show. The Michelle and ear show. Okay. Oh, it's great, Michelle. Nice. No, it doesn't look great. It looks more, I mean, a great might be an overstatement, I agree. I mean, it doesn't necessarily look great, but it looks, looks much improved. Much yeah, improved. Yeah, they're white. Look at all that. Yeah, that, it used to be black, now it's white. Well, no, the whole thing is still black. It used to be black. No, it's not. Look at that whole white side. Then chip is all the black. Today's topic is gangrene. Gangrene is a serious condition that occurs when a lack of blood flow or a serious bacterial infection causes the death of body tissue. Gangrene can affect any part of the body, including the muscles and internal organs. But it typically starts in the extremities, including the toes, fingers, and limbs. Gangrene is a serious condition that can result in amputation of a limb and even death. To stop the spread of tissue death as rapidly as possible, gangrene requires urgent medical attention. Causes Gangrene may occur due to Lack of blood supply Infection Trauma Types of gangrene and their cause Dry gangrene is characterized by dry, shriveled skin and may be brown to purplish blue to black in color. It starts muscling and it is most commonly associated with arterial blood vessel disease, such as atherosclerosis or fetal blood diabetes. Wet gangrene almost always involves a bacterial infection in the affected tissue. It may develop after a severe burn or trauma, where a body part is crushed or squeezed. This can rapidly cut off blood supply to the affected area, causing tissue death and increased risk of infection. Infection from wet gangrene can spread quickly throughout the body and can be fatal, making it a very serious and life-threatening condition if not treated quickly. Which we all know she didn't do quickly. It often occurs in people with diabetes who unknowingly injure a toe or foot. Risk factors may include diabetes, obesity, blood vessel disease, severe injury, surgery, smoking, having HIV, symptoms, skin discoloration, skin that feels cold or cold to the touch, swelling and pain at the site of infection, fever, foul-smelling pus leaking from a blister or sore, shiny appearance to the skin, a crackling noise that comes from the affected area when pressed. In some cases, when the bacterial infection that originates in the gangrenous tissue spreads throughout the body, it can lead to septic shock. Symptoms of septic shock include low blood pressure, confusion, shortness of breath, lightheadedness, rapid heart rate, fever. Diagnosis and treatment. To make a diagnosis, the doctor will carry out the following test. Blood test to look for the presence of certain bacteria or other germ. An abnormally elevated white blood cell count usually indicates the presence of an infection. Imaging tests including CT scan, x-ray, or magnetic resonance imaging scan to view body structures, such as internal organs, blood vessels, or bones. And check the extent to which the gangrene has spread. Fluid or tissue culture to examine for the bacteria and clostridium perfringens. In some cases, surgery may be performed to check the extent of spread. Treatment. Treatment options may depend on the severity of your gangrene. Usually, tissues that have been damaged by gangrene cannot be saved, but steps can be taken to reduce the progression of your condition. Treatment options may include antibiotics that are given intravenously or taken orally, surgery to remove dead tissues, which may help to stop gangrene from spreading, and allows healthy tissue to heal. If possible, damaged or diseased blood vessels may be repaired in order to increase blood flow to the affected area. A skin graft may be used to repair damage to the skin caused by gangrene. This can only be done if an adequate blood supply has been restored to the damaged skin. In severe cases, an affected body part may need to be amputated. Hyperbaric oxygen therapy may also be used. In this type of treatment, you are placed in a specially designed chamber filled with oxygen at a higher pressure than the one found in the outside air. The theory is that blood rich in oxygen slows the growth of bacteria and helps infected wounds heal more easily. Here's the other condition I thought she might have. Now, I'm not saying I'm a doctor. I'm not diagnosing this for entertainment and educational purposes only. I went to school for pharmacy like for a little while, a year. So I am um, not claiming to be a doctor. I've just been reading a lot about this. And then I was at my mom's the first night that she 
showed her black toe and I said, mom, look at this lady's toe. And she still does medical billing and coding. I did it for like five years in transcription I did. Um, so we are like uh, really familiar with reading about diagnoses and um, symptoms and stuff and then just doing reception at the urgent care. And um, my mom's first conclusion was peripheral artery disease. And I mentioned that in the chat and somebody with small artery disease uh, said agreed and they have small artery disease and started discussing their conditions and stuff and how it looks very similar and can cause gangrene. Um, so I just thought this stuff was interesting. It might be geeky or boring for some, but I um, enjoy like learning about it. So this is the other condition I thought she had or has, but yeah, I just think we're going to be on a long train ride here and as well get informed for ourselves. All right. So I hope that was uh, somewhat entertaining or informative. I hope, gosh, I hope everyone has a good, great day, morning, afternoon or night. And until next time, I will talk to you soon your body not getting proper blood flow to your body it could be peripheral artery disease in tonight's medical moment derek francis explains the warning signs and the dangers if left untreated peripheral artery disease or pad is a circulatory problem in which narrowed blood vessels reduce blood flow into the limbs those blood vessels can build up with cholesterol inside them and they start to narrow and decrease the amount of blood flow that's getting to your muscles or to the tissues of your feet and legs many people never have symptoms others have subtle ones subtle signs are if you have a decrease in the amount of hair that's growing on the lower aspects of your legs that can sometimes be a sign or if you just notice your feet are cool or discolored all the time for a lot of people the symptoms is as simple as pain or their legs getting really tired early on when they walk or climb stairs, do activity, their muscles just aren't getting the blood and oxygen that they need. More advanced symptoms of PAD are starting to develop sores or ulcers on your feet or legs, or if you do get a cut, it just doesn't heal as quickly. When left untreated, when left untreated, when left untreated, PADs can lead to tissue damage, tissue damage and other serious problems. And Dr. Yasu says a PAD is often a sign of something worse. If they have um, arterial disease in the blood vessels of the legs, they're uh, likely to have blood vessel disease in the blood vessels around the heart. Once a person hits 50, the rate of PAD goes up, but for people at high risk, it can start much Sooner. Those are really the big risk factors, the smoking, 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 high blood pressure, obesity, and high cholesterol. The good thing about those things is that most of them are things that we can modify if we catch them early on. Some PADs can be treated with medication and lifestyle improvement, while others require surgical procedures. Surgical options are things like balloons or stents, and that's that minimally invasive surgery that we talked about, where you would we go into the um, artery with just a small poker and needle, we take some pictures of the blood flow, and sometimes right then and there we can make the blood flow better. The most serious require a bypass, not unlike the procedure we know with heart disease. Bypasses can be used in all sorts of places in the body to get around blocked blood vessels, where we actually detour around the blocked blood vessels to bring blood down to the foot through something else like a vein or a piece of graft. Dr. Yasa says the easiest way to stay ahead of peripheral artery disease, a simple screening, which is often covered by your insurance. Derek Francis, Fox 17 News. All right, so I hope that was uh, somewhat entertaining or informative. I hope gosh, I hope everyone has a good, great day, morning, afternoon, or night. And until next time, I will talk to you soon.